Tirib, um, it's Mish Ioni Nichroni. I am co director of Moonfish Theatre along with my sister Maraid. Um, it's called Khmer Taloni Nalif, and we work as an ensemble. So um, we devise work in the room together as an ensemble, usually based on a text. And the process we use is quite a drawn out process because we like to involve every member of the ensemble and crew in the process pretty much from the word go. So Moonfish is a bilingual company. We often work through Irish and English within the rehearsal room, even if the production we're working on is not necessarily a bilingual production. We believe that Irish is um, something that belongs to all Irish people, even if you don't speak it. It's still um, a part of your culture that you should feel like you can um, enjoy in some way, even if that means that you're just listening to it. Um, so we create pieces of theatre that we hope are accessible to people, whether they have Irish or not. And um, that's, this is the way we work in the room as well. So all members of our ensemble speak Irish, but not necessarily to the same degree. Um, and some of our ensemble members have learned Irish in the room or, and we're all um, improving, I think, all the time as we work through Irish. So it's something that's very close to our hearts. Agus Dena Madiirat, Iel Arton. How many cogs is fader then? When you're creating a piece um, that is bilingual, that poses challenges. But we quite enjoy those challenges, and um, it's something that really fuels our creative process. Um, when we create shows bilingually in Ngaigag Samerla, on Rudi Yenamud now. Um, Tom and Tony Geary, Bally, I'm sure, listen scale engines gone fuckla. So we try to tell the story without words. Um, so often when we come into the room, and for the first period, we might focus on the text, but then for the next period, we often put the text to the side, find the imagery, the sounds, the movement that um, we have kind of gleaned from the text through the previous process and try to create as much of that without words as possible. So what we're trying to do is build a layered um, theatrical piece that will speak on a number of levels. So you can watch the show even if your Irish is minimal. But there's a lot of ways that we use um, things like subtitles, imagery, music, song, um, as ways of translating scenes that happen in Irish. Yeah, so we, we enjoy messing around with that in the rehearsal room a lot. We spend a lot of time uh, playing with that. And we really think of all the different theatrical languages as um, languages um, within the room. So it's not really a bilingual show as much as a multilingual show. And that's kind of how we, we think about it. Ta munfish lani in nalyev. Agus, kina shishin gomit galeir gachtan a gul boinsach lo. The good this move, the Shangolach, the Tomatation Kinney, you know, and the Lunny Hingali, and Allen Tori. And I suppose um, I can really only speak for myself in terms of uh, why I decided to be based in Galway as an artist. But for me, um, it was a choice that had a lot to do with the kind of theatre that I wanted to create, and um, and also with, I suppose, the the energy of um, Galway itself which is where I grew up. So of course, there's also the, the draw of home and the feeling of um, community that um, when I was away in Scotland, I missed. And uh, I really enjoyed coming back to Galway and kind of settling back here. But it does allow us as a company to access um, the Irish language in a very particular way. Uh, that's the National Theatre for the Irish Language. Agus undus the vi mud a play lotion, agus the vi shishin an himul em a ve kinal a gaibul lotion by the ark em er dus for a vi mer gaibul o er on drama novs than fubble or in a mer novi lotion li. And then later on we um, we worked with them on Star of the Sea. So they were um, co producers of that, and that was a really exper interesting experience for us. And I suppose brought, in a way, brought our work along with um, other. other uh, circumstances I think brought our work to a new, to another level at the time and allowed a wider audience to access it. The, the, the interesting thing about the way the ensemble formed is that when we initially started the ensemble we didn't intend to necessarily make bilingual work or, or work in Irish. 
Um, but it just so happened that the people who we gathered around us and who became part of the ensemble all happened to have Irish or were interested in using the Irish that they had. And when we realised that, we thought um, that it would be a fantastic thing to use in the room. Maybe that's something that Galway has, is, is that it does draw people to it who have an interest in the language. And so it's a very rich place to live in that sense. I think we found that there's a real grow for the Tanga here and possibly all over the country, but it's certainly been a lovely experience to find that community here. And, um, and of course, a lot of our actors also work with Branner, um, who work bilingually as well. So that's really been a lovely relationship. And also there's just a lovely sense of support um, between the companies and shared um, actors, creators. Um, so there's a really lovely ethos um, within the Irish speaking community here uh, that makes creating work a joy. The design process for Moonfish, I would say, is probably quite different from the design process that happens with other companies, I'm guessing, but I, certainly in my experience. We work as an ensemble from the word go and we consider the crew to be part of the ensemble. So we try to get our crew on board as early as possible in the process, which often means that they're there on the first day or at least within the first week of production or, or of um, development. Agus, um, Tashashin Hosimul or Galore Valley, Tasha Hosimul Dina, Adverta Brando or in drama, Er Valley Eggsula, Vestisa Shomra, Ondus. Um, it's really exciting to have people in the room who are looking at it from a design point of view right from the get go. And it also is exciting for the actors because rather than the two worlds only colliding at the very end of the process, um, it, gives, it gives us the opportunity to allow them to grow organically and to really feed off each other. And our process is long and drawn out and starts from a very um, small seed, I suppose, and expands and we never know which direction it's gonna go. So it's interesting, I suppose, from a design point of view because the designers um, that we work with have been very willing to allow that process to grow organically in a way that is, is quite changeable, I suppose. And then of course we also are very keen on the use of space and movement song um, within our pieces, so the costumes have to allow for all that as well. Um, and also we often take on multiple characters and those characters can be male or female. I guess it, it's, it's another one of those things that is really fascinating when it comes to the audience because when we first started um, playing with gender on stage uh, we weren't sure how it would go down but we found that if you invite the audience to take that leap it gives them again a greater sense of ownership and um, a greater, greater sense of participation in the piece um, and the more you push that I think the more that increases so we have always loved that aspect of play on stage and um, and also as a, an ensemble that really worked to kind of um, give female actors um, bigger, more chunky, uh, interesting parts than are usually given to female actors. We've enjoyed um, playing with that and having that uh, freedom on stage. So when it comes to costume, I guess, we wanted that freedom to be there in the costume as well, and, um, but also to challenge the audience, to allow them to see that we're not pretending to be of another gender, but we are using theatre to open up those boundaries and to kind of play within that sphere of gender. We had a brainstorming session there about a month ago that was really exciting because um, we just opened it up to totally new ideas about what, can, what kind of theatre can be created outside of a theatre space um, and even outside of a digital space, you know, what, what kind of theatre can still um, allow the audience to have that live, um, even interactive experience, but doesn't have to take place in the theatre. Um, we haven't been in a room together, obviously, rehearsing and um, being an ensemble, that's, that's tricky because the way we work is that we devise we're having to find new ways of working as well, and um, that's an ongoing process. But we, how much about the of us, I guess, can't go with glory, the mahach and chat machas.